Hi, this is my presentation on government and economics. So I chose Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a beautiful country and it's in southern Africa. It's known for dramatic landscapes and diverse wildlife. It has a ton of hardworking people in here. This has the largest of all the Hungui National Parks in the West and the Gonzu Frontier Park in the South. Zimbabwe has a total land area of 390,000 square kilometers and a well-educated population of around 14 million people. And so on the picture, I have a flag of Zimbabwe and the government there. Um, the kingdom of, I'm sorry, I can't really pronounce this very well, Mapugombi, was a sophisticated trade, and that was in Zimbabwe, in which they started trading with others. And this is sort of the background. They were all ruled by Shona State, creating their own kind of controversy and sort of starting this conflict between Portugal. This kind of led to many wars. Then, around 1821, the Zulu general successfully rebelled against the king to create his own clan. Then, again, a presidential figure was found and made around 1980, which I will talk about that a little bit more. There are lots of wars in between this time, and then on March 29th, 2008, Zimbabwe held a presidential election along with a parliament election. Then, Zimbabwe had a constitution. Zimbabwe formed a constitution in 2013, so not too long ago. And they initiated a supreme law binding the citizens to the government. Um, they really wanted to embrace their diversity. But I do have to say that they are kind of against white people. So, yeah. Okay, moving on to democracy. Zimbabwe has a presidential system of government. The previous system of government was removed when they adopted a new constitution. Constitutional changes in 2005 were made for the Senate, and the upper chamber were reconstructed. The House of Assembly is a lower chamber in their parliament. And fun fact, their parliament actually helps make a lot of the laws. And leading up to that, Robert Mugabe, I'm sorry if this is wrong, but uh, his name uh, is the president of Zimbabwe. He can make and approve the laws that are based on the Roman Dutch law and English law. Some of the laws are pretty funny. Citizens may, may not make offensive gestures at a passing state motorcade. Unlawful and intentional sexual relations between two human males is not allowed. And then we have the fancy signature of Robert Mugabe. I'm so sorry. I'm probably killing his name. Okay. So, like I said, the president is Robert Mugabe. Uh, he is the president of Zimbabwe. He was a leader of a rebellion group. And what's kind of awesome and kind of not at the same time is he totally was in opposition in the white minority rule that was placed during that time. So, <laughs> I am not very supportive of, of that, but he is a very amazing man. He was elected prime minister in 18, 1980 and served until 1987. He became the first executive head of state in Zimbabwe. Then, in August 2006, he was the world's oldest and one of the longest-serving um, head states, and he has been ruling for 
36 years. Moving on to political parties. Uh, they Zimbabwe has a ton of political parties, but some of the major ones are African People's Congress, Zimbabwe African National Union, Zimbabwe First Party, Movement for Democratic Change, and Zimbabwe African People's Union. Bill of Rights, um, well, technically they don't have one yet, but they are developing one, and this is because they are trying to replace their 1979 Lancaster House Constitution, and it's already been amended 19 times, so I'm pretty sure it's time for a new one. They uh, have agreed that this is a great idea and a great opportunity for them. Moving on to some fun facts that I found. Zimbabwe mostly calls every kind of toothpaste Colgate, every soft drink Coke, every washing powder Surf, and every floor polish Cobra. So these are just little nerdy facts I found. Um, some political and more governmental facts are is that their currency is actually the United States dollar. I had no clue. The government of Zimbabwe is centralized around, um, is a centralized one, and is divided into eight provinces and two cities for administrative purposes. Then these provinces are subdivided into 59 districts and 1,200 municipals, better known as wards. Each province has a stinking capital. So many capitals. Okay, the anthem... I found that I do not know how to sing this in another language. So, this is roughly translated into English, and it says, Oh, lift high our banner, the flag of Zimbabwe, the symbol of freedom proclaiming victory. We praise our hero's sacrifice and vow to keep our land from foes, and may the Almighty protect and bless our land. Look at Zimbabwe, a land so wondrously lovely, with mountains, rivers, cascading, flowing free. May rain abound and fields be fertile. May we be fed, our labor blessed, and may the Almighty protect and bless our land. O oh God, we beseech Thee to bless our native land, the land of our fathers bestowed upon all, us all. For Zambazi to Limpio, may leaders be exemplary, and may the Almighty protect and bless our land. Sadly, do not know how to sing that, or else I would. Um, so thank you. This has been super much fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And I have a works cited page just for you. Thank you. Bye.